So the first question I have is maybe you can define for us really what the term embedded means because when I think about it, I really think about it as a catch-all category. Yeah, it is it's kind of a catch-all category and it's uh, embedded a term I think it's been in our industry for, for decades and it's probably a little outdated now. But what we mean by embedded at Micron is I guess it's easy just to explain it by taking a step back for a second. And if you look at the semiconductor market, about 40% of all the silicon the industry produces goes towards memory. Uh, about 20% of the revenue are $60 billion. That's a lot of memory. And most of that memory is driven by huge segments, um, very large consumers of memory. DRAM in personal computers, for example, NAND in removable media like uh, USB drives or SD cards. Um, and uh, also uh, a combination of the two in things like mobile communications. But there are hundreds, if not thousands, of other segments and applications out there that, that require memory, both non-volatile flash memory as well as volatile memory like DRAM. That's what uh, the embedded segment serves at uh, Micron. So I guess to get to where we are today, you know, with the recent acquisition of Mnemonics, Mnemonics had a significant role in Embedded, and maybe you could um, give us an overview of the history to where we are today within Embedded. Yeah, you bet. Um, Mnemonics focused on non-volatile memory, of course, and uh, both NAND and NOR flash. In fact, it had the widest portfolio of flash memory available for the Embedded market. Had about one-fourth of the market share. Mm -hmm. um, didn't have access to RAM didn't have access to leading edge high density MLC NAND. Um, but despite that, um, uh, had most of the products that the embedded market really needed. Um, that's what we'd call the solution, and I think that was part of the puzzle. But the other thing that uh, Mnemonics delivered to the embedded market was the concept of stability. Um, stability in terms of supply. During times of constraint, our customers wanted to know that we would be there to supply them. Um, stability in terms of quality. Uh, that means not just having the right quality levels today, but also a commitment to continuous improvement so that we continue to reduce the, uh, the uh, defect levels um, over time and that their products would work better over time. It meant stability in terms of pricing. A lot of our customers uh, didn't want to be exposed to the wild swings of the, uh, the memory market, and they wanted that stability from us, and we were there to provide that. Um, those are the things that characterize the embedded market at Mnemonics. That, that's what it delivered. Okay, so in terms of benefits, I hear a lot of you know, stability as kind of one of the key takeaways for customers. Is, would you agree with that? Yeah, a absolutely. Uh, I think that a sol solution is very important. And uh, you know, like I said, that uh, we did have that. And now that we're part of Micron, uh, we can also add to it uh, the very important Micron embedded products like DRAM and high-density mm -hmm. MLC NAND. Um, those are big uh, product lines that complement and add up to the, the total portfolio or the total solution that we're able to uh, offer to our customers. Um, part of having the right solution is also being there with the right solutions for tomorrow. Mm -hmm. uh, Micron has technology leadership in NOR flash, in NAND flash, and in DRAM. And uh, so we can assure our customers that we'll be there with the right technology choices for the future as well as for those that they require today. Could you tell us a little bit about what you mean by the portfolio that we have? What, what products exactly does that contain? Yeah, today our, our portfolio includes uh, almost every product that embedded customers could possibly want. Uh, from the NOR perspective, that includes serial and parallel NOR flash architectures, densities ranging from 5 to 12 kilobits all the way up to 2 gigabits. Wow. In fact, we even stack some of our products up uh, to create 8 gigabit uh, NOR flash devices. Uh, from the NAND perspective, uh, the densities range from 128 megabits up to multiple gigabits. Uh, we have everything from low density, uh, uh, one bit ECC uh, NAND, all the way up to you know, the most advanced uh, leading edge NAND that the industry has to offer today. Also, from the DRAM perspective, we offer a full portfolio of DRAM products, and those are very important to the embedded customers as well. You, know, you talked a little bit about the kilobits of NOR flash, I guess is what it was, and I hear a lot of people talking about more capacity, higher density, whatever it is, and it's referred to NAND. Maybe you could enlighten me on what you mean really by where these low density NOR flashes used within maybe some of these devices? Yeah, flash is really ubiquitous. Uh, it's in almost every device that uh, you can imagine. It's in 
uh, digital still cameras, it's in digital television, it's in automobiles, um, it's in the, uh, it stores the code that supports some of the controllers and hard disk drives, it's really everywhere. I don't think people know that, you know, I think when they think of flash they just think of it in terms of, or my, my USB you know, drive or my flash card or whatever it is, I don't think about it in everywhere, in your car or anything. Yeah, it, it's everywhere and it's really important too um, because it stores the, the boot code that's required to power up the application. It stores the applications code that runs a lot of the software that makes it fun to use these devices. Mm -hmm. And it also stores a lot of the data that uh, when you take uh, photographs, for example, or you record audio, um, mm -hmm. Flash is used for all these things. So a new memory that's come in that with the acquisition of mnemonics I've heard a little bit about is face change memory. Could you uh, tell us a little bit about this technology and where it is used within the embedded space? Yeah, you bet. Face change memory is very exciting. Um, exciting for a few reasons. I think uh, first and foremost, it's just at the beginning of its tech technology life cycle. Um, face change memory offers the the a lot of the attributes that NORFLASH, NANDFLASH, and DRAM do today. Mm -hmm and then some in addition to that. Um, but I think most importantly, it's just at the beginning of this technology life cycle. Um, there are decades of scalability ahead of us where phase change memory. Mm -hmm. We're just introducing the products now. NAND, NOR, and DRAM have been around for a couple of decades, and they're uh, you know, coming to the ends of their lifetime, yeah. so to speak. So we think phase change memory offers a lot of promise for the future, and it offers a lot of promise really in two ways. Um, first, um, we're very convinced that it can extend the NOR and NAND architectures that we have today for, like I said, a couple of decades. Uh, we're going to be able to offer our customers that kind of solution for a long time in the future. That's what stability is all about. Um, one of the products that we introduced recently, the Omnio product line, it's a serial and a parallel NOR um, ba uh, architecture product made from phase change memory technology. Mm -hmm. That's just a, a, our, our first product. That, that's what we're using to allow customers to, to use the technology, get used to some of the uh, unique features, as well as some of the replacement features. Um, so extending um, the, the products that the embedded customers need today is, is really one key uh, result of phase change memory. But the other I think that's very interesting is uh, phase change memory is also a disruptive technology. Mm -hmm. uh, because it combines the attributes of NAND, NOR, and DRAM, it can do things that neither of the three can do independently today. And when you put those three together, some very interesting things can happen. If you've heard my colleague uh, Ed Dollar speak at any of the industry conferences in the last couple of years, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. And you'll be hearing more about that from us in the future. That's great. We're looking forward to it. So I guess, you know, if we were to sit down with a customer today and you had to tell them kind of what the key value propositions were at, for Micron in the embedded space, what would, be, what would be those key takeaways that you would leave? Yeah, I think it comes down to two simple things. You know, first is having the right solution. You've got to have the right products there today. You've got to have the right products tomorrow. Um, you know, like we've been, been discussing, we've got that. Yeah. Um, the other thing is you have to know the market. You have to know what the customers want above and beyond that solution. And I think that can be characterized in, the, in one word, which is stability. And again, that's stability in supply, stability in pricing, stability in quality, and stability in financial health. Uh, they want to know that uh, we're going to be around uh, in the years coming to yeah. continue serving them. Uh, Micron's been around since the 1970s making memories. I can't think of a, a better example of uh, stability and that, our, that our customers can, can count on for the future. That's great. Well, thanks so much for talking with us. It's been a good conversation, and we look forward to hearing and seeing more to come from the Embedded Solutions Group. Thank you, Kirsten. Thanks.